It's the Sunday morning screaming memes with your host, Bandana J. Morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning. I'm out here with seeing, just getting the day started. I just want to move my one thing over. Uh, okay. Um, it's the premiere show of the Sunday morning Screamy Mimis with me, Bandana J. I appreciate everything you're doing. We had a great day yesterday. We were out and about in Cookville. We went to the Hispanic Festival. We went to the Great Pumpkin Festival. And it was a great time at both. Awesome food was at the Hispanic Festival that we had. The meal was great. You've seen us getting it and all. Met a lot of nice people there. It was a lot of fun. Then, like I said, we went over to the Great Pumpkin Festival. We met a friend there that's a pastor at a local church, uh, the Pilgrim Baptist Church. We had a great time talking with him and sharing stuff. So it was a great time all the way around. There was not much really to see there, but um, it was it, it, the craft vendors that were there were pretty good. You know what I mean? But it, there was not a lot to see. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than that. But it was a, a great, great time. I wanted to show you some of the stuff that Gail got in that little gift bag at the Spanish Festival. This was one of the items in there. It's some sort of candy. I was going to open it up and try it with you guys here to see, you know, how it is, you know. So I'm just getting it open, you know. This is part of the show. We're going to try to do some spontaneous stuff, too. It was called Crayon. It's a... It's a Hispanic thing, you know, and the top, I guess, twists off or pops off. I don't know what it does. I guess got to knock a hole in the top, you know. Oh, yeah, you got to knock a hole in the top. Uh, let me see if you give me a fork or something, you know. I didn't realize the top of it. You know. I'll be here in a minute. Dang. Hole in it. Yeah. Okay. Now you twist this bottom like that. And it looks like the stuff comes out, or maybe not. Maybe it comes out. I don't know really what this does, but there you go. You see it coming up. I'll take that. There's a gunshot off in the distance. I'm going to scrape off a piece off the top of it and try this. Oh, it is so sweet. Mm. It is very sweet. It does taste like mangoes, but it is very sweet. Close that up. Okay. This one I already tried. It was a different one. I tried that. And it's kind of hard. You got to push it up with your thumb and your fingers. It oozes up like that. And it, this is just like eating honey. There's some sort of weird bird off in the distance. And they're really sweet. Whew. I took this lollipop from her. It's a water, watermelon flavored lollipop. And um, I'm going to try it out a little later. Football games come on. But, um, what was I going to say? Oh, those are sweet. Um, they got me jazzing. <laughs> Object of it is, I'm going to show some. We're just going to John and talk about them. So come online. Um, you can comment also yourself. You know, I'll see it and I'll, I'll repeat it. You know, be nice about it and all. It's just all in fun. It's just all in fun. So here we go. I'm going to get this kind of going. I 
hit the screencast. Whoop. There we go. I said start now. Okay. <laughs> and we're screencast. I'm going to go down here. Oh, there we go. That's what I want. Very good. Let me just make me a little bit bigger. There you go. That should work out fine. Now, like this first one I got up here, it's October. It ain't, it's not Oktoberfest until the Bratwurst comes out. That is so funny. I mean, because you could take it dirty, you could take it clean, you know, take it, you know, how, how, however way you want with it. <laughs> you know, but it's a fun little thing. You know, that's say no to drugs. We don't want to worry about that one today. Um, this one here. You know, kind of says, I will drink beer here, there, I will drink beer anywhere. You know, hey, I don't see no harm in having a few beers every now and then and just laughing and having a drink. I mean, that's just me. You know, um, a lot of other people don't think that, but that that's their personal business. I want to make sure of that. Now, some comments, I might see it. You know what I mean? So. I'm going to do my best to see what I can see, you know. I might ask Gail to write a comment, you know. Now, here's something about Halloween candy. Uh, you know, it's kind of a fun, funny thing because, you know, people, types of people who give you types of candy, you know. Like these ones that give you these tappy things, they're the old timers, you know, the psychotic pet gives you all these sugar ones, you know, and the cheap, uh, make cheap ones that give you the, the really the cheap candy and the hard candies, you know, so, I mean, it's just a funny thing the way I see it, I didn't know if Gail te uh, wrote anything, did you? Okay, you know, now, we are animal lovers, you know, and it says, righteous man cares for the life of his animals, you know, Proverbs, which is true. So if you have pets, take care of them, you know, get them spayed, get them neutered if you're not a breeder, you know, uh, bring them inside on cold days and stormy days. I also keep my guys in and out, you know what I mean, on nice days, most of them are out all day, you know, and then when the weather's bad, they come in, you know, so take care of your animals, you know, treat them like as if they're a family member. Just let me know when you do, you know. You know, here's a classic movie, you know, uh, this is the movie Taps, and with Tom Cruise, Timothy Hutton, you know, Evan Helder, and Sean Penn. You know, this is when these actors were young and upcoming. You know, they should have really made a lot more movies with all these actors in them when they were young. They, they you know, they made like one, maybe two, and then they got older and they would never together. And these movies were hits, it was a lot of good talent working together so they should have kept them together you know what i mean they should have did several movies of them young i think they would have been classics you know that's just my opinion now here's a movie i know one of my friends george he was an al pacino fan this is um as serpico and it's based on a true story about a new york cop that fought corruption so um it's cool I mean, it's a lot. It, it's a great movie. It's an early Al Pacino movie that really, really made him. Uh, one of the things I find funny with Al Pacino: one minute he looks young, one minute he looks old. You know, <laughs> so I mean, he, he he got a diversified face or something. You know? So I mean, I get a kick out of him with that. You know, but this is a a great early movie with him. It really shows his talent. You know, if you ever never seen it, check it out. Gumby and Pokey, another classic, you know, rubber toys that made a fortune back then, you know, I mean, I was not a big fan of them, I didn't really understand them, what they were trying to do, I mean, then with the, and there's two, there's a couple other characters, the blockheads and all, they were like their enemies, I mean, I, I never could figure out what the cartoon was about, I mean, even to this day, if I see, I really don't know if they had a moral to him or what, you know, <laughs> so, and he didn't walk, he skated around, so I, I don't get it, you know, okay, uh, there's a lot of wrestling fans and everything, did that work? I sent some in Facebook and Twitch. 
Oh, okay. I didn't see him. Okay. You know, let me just see something here. I'm just curious. If I, I probably have to go with the screencast, but I don't want to do that. Okay. But I think I might even use a different program next time. I'm using uh, one thing to do this, but I might switch to another. You know what I mean? Next time. But this is uh, when he was doing Conan, you know, and as you can see, Andre the Giant and I think that was Wilt Chamberlain who played. I might be wrong. No, that's not Will Chamberlain. I forget his name. Um, I forget. I might be right. I might be wrong. I'm drawing a little bit of a blank here. That played in the movie with him, you know, and you would think Arnold Schwarzenegger was taller, but he really wasn't. He was. He's not a very tall man, you know, and it just sees how short he is compared to them, you know, and even... Andre the Giant has a, next to a person of almost equal size, you know. So this is a great picture. I I I, I love this picture because it just goes to show who these guys are compare in size, you know. Now, if anybody likes really classic Batman, this is really good. Here you got Jerry Lewis, Adam West, Dick Sean, who's in the background pointing at. Cesar Romero's head, who was the Joker then, with Jane Wall on the set of Batman. This is great. It goes to show how all these actors knew one another and, and participated with one another and supported one another's show. You don't really see that with shows and all today. I mean, uh, they, they're out there, they do stuff, but you never see them interact with one another. Back then, that's why it was so classic back then. All these guys knew one another, and they supported one another, got them on shows, gave them work, but you don't really see that today. I mean, I, I, I wish they would kind of work together more. You know, they're all pretty much out for their own, and they fall apart, you know? Now, here's um, Josh Kennison with Elvira. He's classic. I, I think he's extremely funny, and uh, Elvira, well, she just speaks for herself. Now, I like his sense of humor, I like him doing the screaming parts, I think it's hysterical, you know, if you've never seen him, try to Google him or Facebook him, and you'll laugh, I mean, he's, he's, he's classic, and Elvira, like I said, she, she's amazing, you know, now here's an old western movie called Arrowhead, I'm a Charles and Heston fan and all that, Jack Palance, I think, just died recently, and this is a good movie, you know, this Arrowhead. You know, uh, I seen it a long time ago, and it's a worthwhile movie. It's one of Charleston Heston's greatest roles, but it's not his worst either. You know, he, he plays a really good part in it. it you know, if I remember right, he, he's trying to bring her back to her family, and uh, Jack Palin's playing the part of the Indian, is trying to stop them, and it, it, it's, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. Now, here we have uh, Cheech from Cheech and Chong with Elvira. Like I said, once again, a lot of these actors and all work together, support one another. And he was always classic with her, you know, looking at her chest and all this shit. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, you know what I mean? Now, I'm a Captain Ron fan. I'm also a uh, Kurt Russell fan. I think he's very talented, very funny, and this is one of my favorite lines in this movie, Captain Ron. You know, this land is uh, hoodoo, voodoo, and all and all weird shit, and I always say that about the hills of Tennessee I live in now. You know, people say what it's like. I said, man, there's hoodoo, voodoo, and all sorts of weird shit, you know, and that's the truth. I mean, it's, it's funny. That, that movie has a few other classic lines in it, and if you've never seen it, Believe me, you'll laugh. I think it's a hidden gem as a summer movie. You know, pop it on as one of your summer movies, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, here's something. I would love to see this go down the road. Where it says Acme, Caution, Tasmanian Devil. You know, everything in the Warner Brothers thing was from Acme. You know, Acme Bombs, Acme Roads, Acme Cars. They did all sorts of <laughs> But if you seen this going down the road and you didn't know what it was, I bet people did think it was a Tasmanian devil in there. You know, they're only really a small creature about yay big. You know, they're not very tall. You know, they're a small little animal. And, you know, it's kind of funny, you know. But I would I would love to see that going down the road. That would have cracked me up. 
And then we got this lane, not a uh, birthway, let them merge. I don't know if you ever drove around, you know, how far you've driven. But, yeah, you get in some lanes, people think they own the lane. Share the road, people. Let's cut back on the aggravation and all of that. You know, get out there, share the road, you know, drive safely. Everybody gets where they got to go. I mean, I just think that says it all. I mean, some of these memes, they might seem funny to, or, or rude, but they get the point across. You know, this, I, I had to read this a few times because it really, it, it doesn't really spell that backwards. But it says, stress is dessert spelled backwards. Kind of yes, kind of no, you know, because it should have been desserts, you know, with, with uh, T-S, but, you know, or it should have been stressed is dessert spelled backwards. So it's missing a couple letters, but I think you get it, you know. But if it was if, if it was distressed, you know, stressed, E-D, you know, is dessert spelled backwards wouldn't make more sense. So someone didn't get their spelling too, <laughs> too good there. But I guess the food is good, you know. Now, this I thought was a funny picture, you know, like, because uh, you got, like, uh, the museum movies that were out where things came to life. And I always like tall ships and all that. And if I saw this, that would have cracked me up anywhere. You know, seeing the ship, you know, flowing out of the picture, you know, I think is kind of funny. You know, I think that's a very funny picture. You know, then we got, I thought this was an exciting pirate picture. You know what I mean? I like pirates, always did as a kid. You know, uh, when the Captain Jack movies came out, you know, the... Um, what it was like Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, those are great, great movies. I like the old Swashbuckler movies with Burt Lancaster and all them. Blackbeard, the old Blackbeard movie, I think is the best pirate movie ever made. You know, uh, he also kind of reprised the role. Um, kind of think the actors. Treasure Island as long. Silver, you know, and he did a great job there. He kind of portrayed it as Blackbeard, you know. So, I mean, so you got like a double, and that's why the movie was is classic, you know. And that was the Walt Disney version uh, I'm talking about. But um, I can't think of his name right now. But when he did Blackbeard, you know, it, 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 it's an awesome movie if you go, if you see it, you know. And he looks like that picture there too. Now this is the Wolfman. He's one of my favorite Halloween characters and favorite monster movie people. And I think the way Lon Chaney did it, uh, Lon Chaney Jr. did it years ago, is the best and always will be. I don't see him making the snout long, trying to make him look all dog-like and all. And I think it's too much special effect, you know. Um, if someone was going to change into one, I don't see them transforming like that. You know what I mean? I think more like this. You know, there'd be subtle changes. It'd be more of a mental change. And I think what he really got across in it was that. But I always liked when he played the role, of the, the movie, The Werewolf, the original with Lon Chaney in it, Lon Chaney Jr. in it is the best well to me will always be like i said i think the i think the way they make the werewolves look now is, is too much kind of the one american werewolf in london i can live with that a little bit but this, this is to me if i thought of a werewolf would look like this not a guy all muscled up you know the, the body stretched wet it, it doesn't seem that realistic to me you know what i mean where you know even if you are possessed by a wolf demon or whatever you know what i mean this is how i i always picture it. so if you've never seen it sit back get your popcorn and you will love it you know i'm watching my dog walk around there's elvira but i don't think that is elvira but it's supposed to be elvira so i was debating on this picture if it was her or not because you do got some impersonators that do a, a good impression of her so i'm debating if that's really her or not this i thought was extremely funny this said found this new grill at walmart they have hundreds of them that is funny it's a double cart 
uh, only stores I know that really use those around here is a Food Lion, and that would work perfect as a grill like that. It would, you know. So I thought that was hysterical. I, you know, that made me pop the smile on my face, you know, because. You could do that with one. I mean, that would be great. <laughs> I mean, it will work out perfect for that. So that's a fun photo. And, you know, if the apocalypse ever happens, go out and get one of these wagons and you'll always have a grill to cook on, you know, so you'll have something, you know, so that, that should work out fine, you know. Then you got Ted and Bill from the Ted and Bill m movies. You know, it says, the rule of English, I before E except after C. Then you read this and it's, it's, it's so true. So many people have gotten arguments with English teachers. It says, unless A, feisty and caffeinated neighbors seize your binge sleigh filled of counterfeit freight while foreign weightlifters leisurely ride away on the reindeer. You know, it, you know, it's like, this is why people hate English, you know. It, you know, you go, you fail in English class because it's I before E. Except, and this is why you got spell check, you know, because, yes, this does get complicated. I mean, you, some words are not like that. And I remember arguing that stuff in English class and all in high school. You know, you would hear this, and it's like, yeah, but it's this. Uh, then they try to give you this whole explanation of the damn English language. It's like... Spell it the best you can, people. But if you got spell check, hit the spell check. But even double check spell check because sometimes it doesn't work that way. Always refer to a dictionary. You know, get the dictionary. Get the classic Webster, you know, and look the word up. So, but that's, I thought that was really funny. I got friends who write and uh, I know they got a kick out of this when I shared it, you know, because this is true. You know, if you write, and all you do get mixed up on on letters and words and all that and th this is classic i mean this is just really funny and then here's another one you know it says an elementary school right here's a basic understanding of history and how the world works then when you're in high school actually that's not quite right everything is is actually a whole lot more complicated than that then when you're in college Thing you know is wrong and then you, when we go and watch tv on the history channel what do you hear aliens you know so i always based my science on my grammar school and high school experiences that's science you know when you start getting into college and all of that to me a lot of it gets theorized and it's not it, no you know when you break it down to the basic sciences you'll know what's right or wrong i mean a anything i mean because your basic science is is always there you know you, you your best soluble stuff is water to dissolve stuff i mean yeah acid might eat through it all but it, it, you can't use that on everything you know but you know break it down to your basics that you learned in school You'll never go wrong. That's my opinion. That's how I live by, you know, I, you know, and that deals with um, making stuff, thinking about stuff, doing stuff. You know, I break it down to the elementary sciences that I learned. And if it doesn't fit into one of those, it's not going to work. <laughs> you know, that, that's how I see it. Whoopsie. Sorry about that. Then I got a kick out of this one, you know, because... It says, you know, uh, if you've seen the uh, uh, Avengers, you know, uh, Endgame and Infinity Wars, you know, I get a kick out of this because a lot of people on uh, Twitch, Facebook, you know, on, on YouTube, all go by other names. It's like me, I, I'm known by people as Bandana J. My wife is known by people as Wild Olive Gale. 
you know. So this I, I find really funny. He goes, hi, I'm Peter, by the way, and Dr. Strange. His real name is Strange, you know, and he goes, Dr. Strange. And he goes, oh, we're using our made-up names. Then I'm Spider-Man. Then he gives him a look, you know. So I think that's really funny, you know, because even when you meet people outside, like yesterday, uh, uh, a person I met, you know, and I'm, I was on their Facebook page, and I said, well, I'm on there. I said, I'm Banana J, Bandana J, you know, that's who I am. He said, you're Bandana J? And I'm like, yeah. You know, so it's like, so sometimes people don't know who you are, you know. <laughs> so you don't know what to use the makeup name or use your real name, you know. But, uh, you know, have fun with it, you know, make up a name, hell, you know. Now, this is... Uh, little light you will find on your car. You know, I have friends who were car buffs. And if I had all these lights on my car, you know, for warnings and all that, I I would break my dashboard. You know, I know some of them, you know what I mean? And, but this is like crazy. And some of these are on a lot of cars. I mean, so many little check lights and all that. And forget all that jazz, you know. This I find funny because, you know, young guys today, you know, you need to go out there and experience stuff, you know, shine shoes, get a job, you know. So working is very important, you know, whether, you know, you're shining girls' boots, men's shoes, whatever, you know, I just think this picture's hysterical. Now, this is an old one of um, New York City when the Twin Towers were still there. And it reminds me a lot of home when I was there. It has changed a lot since I was there. Which is, for the good, a lot of it, I think. And some, maybe not too good. You know what I mean? But it, a lot of changes have taken place. But these old piers, the way they were, that's the way it was when I was there. And I was there when they built the new pier. So, I think that was a good change. You still had people complaining they got rid of the old piers. What the hell did you want the old piers for? You couldn't walk on them, as you see. These kids were playing on a dilapidated thing. I played on the same ground those little kids did. Where the car is parked, I'm still debating if that's my car. Because I can't see the plate, but... I had a car back then that looked exactly like that. <laughs> so I think someone took a picture of my car of New York because you used to have a lot of photographers floating around then. So I don't know. Then the one on the bottom, that's pretty much what's now. Get out of here. Go, go, go. There's nothing there for you, you know. He, he's trying to walk through everything. But that's how it looks now with the lights and the Freedom Tower. And the clock is from uh, the Co old Colgate building that was there. Uh, they made palm olive soap and all that stuff. And um, that clock had the biggest face in, in the world. I think it still holds that record. I'm not sure. But it used to hold the record as the biggest clock in the world. But that's how where I'm from parts of it look like, you know. And, you know, it's just funny, I think. <laughs> Then this is if you, you car lovers or anybody, you know, and it says guy did this on his own, won't start, you know, and I never done this, but I've done it with other parts, you know. I would put a, a part on the vehicle, and I would forget to take a connector off or something, and nothing would work or it would work wrong and not hook up some. So this is so true. This was a cap that's over the terminal. So it doesn't get broken, you know, scuffed where it wouldn't work, you know. And evidently someone forgot to take it off, you know. And it's so true if you work on vehicles, something small like that you won't forget, you know. I mean, that's a, that's a fact. Then that's Simon Bar Sinister from uh, Underdog fame. You know, he was, he was classic in his own right, you know, when they drew these things. He kind of talked like... Uh, Boris Karloff and all of this. He supposedly he supposed to have the look at that a little bit. But he was a classic villain from Underdog, you know. Now, this is my heritage, and I'm super proud of it. It says, I'm not, but I'm Polish. And that's the same thing. Hey, that's right, you know. So I get a kick out of it. I love to see memes that say about Polish people are good and all. 
proud of my heritage, you know. Everybody should be proud of their heritage, especially if you're Polish, you know. If you're not no heritage, become Polish, you know. I mean, it's it's the greatest, you know. Uh, there was a controversy over um, a mascot, you know, and someone said, well, what nationality are you? I said, I'm Polish. And, you know, and they said, well, what if the mascot would say, go Polacks? I said, oh, I would love that. I would die laughing. I would be out there in that, on that field cheering, go Polacks. I would think that's the greatest thing going. I was almost tempted to try to form a team, softball team, baseball team, peewee, football team, whatever, just to call them the Polacks. I would, that was awesome. I loved the idea. But then they just looked at me because I'm like, it's just stupid what you people worry about, you know. So it, it, it's great, you know. It, it's just great, you know. But this is how I see stuff, you know. And you know, I just love, you know. What I mean, but you know, but that that's how that went, and I thought it was real funny. And the, the look on their face went blank, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, so go Pollocks, you know. Woo <laughs> Now, I like to grill. A lot of people know that. I I cook on open fire. I cook on a gas grill. I cook on coals. You know, I don't really smoke meat, you know what I mean? But I do a lot of that. And then this is a, a you, I've seen these in the stores, and they're not bad. Uh, I wouldn't use them to cook like chicken or something like that. That takes a long time because there's not a lot of coals in them. Uh, but to cook like one or two burgers for yourself, to cook a few hot dogs is fine. You know, something like that, it's great. You know, it comes all equipped in one. You light it, cook it. It comes with a little grate on it. So if you don't have a big area to do stuff and you just want to have a little uh, cookout in your backyard or on your deck, you know, uh, just make sure it's on a non-flammable surface, you know, and... and, and Cook yourself something. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with it. You'll get some of these people, oh, you need a grill. You need to have fun. Have fun in life, people. You know, just get the little grill kit. I used to carry in my car, and my friends could testify to this. I carried a small hibachi grill in the back trunk of my car for years. And I would cook on it at places. I would just grab a bag of charcoal, pull it out the trunk, and cook. I couldn't cook a uh, a, a four course meal on it kinda but I could cook some quick burgers on it I can cook some hot dogs on it I could maybe do some little steaks on it you know but it was great when it cooled down I put it back in my trunk and away I went they sell even other smaller grills they call them uh, barbecue buddies and all of that they're little round grill you know get yourself one put it off to the side you always have it and have fun. Go outside and cook. If, if you're near a park and they allow uh, barbecuing, you know, cooking on a thing, take it with you. It's it's small. It's portable. Hey, you know, you don't got to carry a big, you know, uh, charboiled grill out there. You know, th these work just as fine. Just take your time cooking on them and make sure your food is cooked. Here's some scary pumpkin idea. You know, and I got the check engine light one again. You know, that's like the scariness. But the one in the top um, left, no, sorry, top right, top right. I made a pumpkin like that years ago that looked almost like that. You know what I mean? And they're fun to do. Now, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a believer in Jesus. You're not supposed to, you know, do these holidays. But to make a pumpkin with a, a scary or funny face, I don't see no harm in that. That's just me. Have fun, you know. Hey, I like pumpkin seeds. I'm not going to buy a pumpkin just to cut out the pumpkin seeds and throw the whole pumpkin away. They're not expensive, but they cost a few bucks. So, make a jack-o'-lantern out of it. Why not? You know what I mean? So, I mean... It's it's fun. It's a fun thing. You don't got to put a scary face. I put smiles on them. Well, they all got smiles, even though they look devilish. Maybe, maybe that's the way they smile. They could be ugly people or something. <laughs> you know, so that's the way it is, you know. Then it said, this is a Predator movie, you know. Uh, this is when they went to that 
predator planet where they're all being hunted. It said in Predators, there's a brief shot of a homeo rectus skull in the Predators camp, meaning they have been hunting humans for at least 70,000 years. Maybe they did. But if you watch the other movies, I don't think it was 70,000 years. You know what I mean? Because what I believe in, personally, you didn't know nobody was around 70,000 years ago. But they showed them in the other movie going through the ice, going to some sort of uh, pyramid thing that had all the labyrinth mazes and all that. And I don't think they said that was 70,000 years. And they weren't hunting the humans then. They were hunting the air. Aliens. So uh, the aliens that had the thing come out the mouth from the alien movies with the Gorney Weaver, you know. So I don't know where they get the seventy thousand years from, you know. But it, it seems every human they fought outside of Schwarzenegger and um, Danny Glover, you know, they kill. <laughs> I mean, you really got to get the edge on them to, to survive, you know. And they got trapped on this planet, so they were never going to leave. So eventually, they're going to get killed. You know what I mean? But I thought that was an interesting photo. But, you know, I, I like when they put all these small, subtle things in, in, the, in the movies. Because in the movie uh, uh, Predator 2, you see at the end the alien skull in the spaceship, you know, if no one's seen it, spoiler alert, sorry, you know, but I think everybody's seen this sooner or later, and they took so long to make the movie of them fighting, it just took years and years and years where they should have came out with it sooner, you know, and it just took too long, you know, so that's that. <laughs> then this is a pomegranate. You know, I like these very much. I've been eating them ever since a kid. You know, when I first ate pomegranates years ago back in New Jersey, they were so cheap to buy. No one bought them. You know what I mean? Very few. I mean, and ever since they came out with this craze, you eat them, they purify your body, your mind, everything. They went sky high in price to me, no reason, you know, because they are what they are, you know, and... They just went super high in price, you know, and now it's like, yeah, I want to buy them, but I don't want to pay the price for them. So I really wait till they go on sale and buy them because they're a great thing to eat. They're a fun thing to eat. I like sprinkling them on different foods and in my salad, you know, and they're just fine. I'm not a health crazed nut or nothing like that. You know, but I like mixing some stuff like that with a salad and especially with a little oil and vinegar or just eating it plain. It adds a lot of flavor and natural stuff for you, too. Ah, here you go. You know, flashback to the 70s. Uh, these are the detectives and police shows I grew up watching in the 70s. Uh, the one in the bottom corner that I'm blocking is called SWAT. You know, that was a police theme uh, TV show. You know, but Kojak was great with Telly Savalas in it. Quick. Uh, uh, note with that he started eating the lollipops later on in the episodes he was giving up smoking so he would eat the lollipops in place of lighting cigarettes so there's a little FYI for you on that one you know then police woman was great with Angie Dickerson Barnaby Jones was good I like some of the episodes with that Streets of San Francisco eh, young Michael Douglas though in that coming up learning the learning the skills. Adam 12 is just classic. Malloy and Reed, I still watch them today. Now I laugh like hell watching them because if cops were getting a getting a bad rap in LA, then no <laughs> no wonder why it's crazy there with the police cuz they people were bitching about them then. The Rockford Files with James Gardner is classic. Uh, he he actually uh, killed Bruce Lee in, in one of them. He made Bruce Lee jump off the balcony. <laughs> so, <laughs> police story was a bad, and that was kind of okay. The Rookies, I think it was a little bit dramatic. Charlie's Angels is still on these days, you know, with Farrah Fawcett, you know, Jacqueline Smith and Kate Jackson. Um, beautiful women, you know, that went on to other things, but the stories were good, you know, and it was, it was action. Chips, I think, was really good, 
You know what I mean? Uh, I was a fan of the show. I mean, it had good stories, good action. Beretta, eh, it was kind of okay. I'm not a big fan of Beretta. But Barney Miller, I'm a, I'm a big, big fan of that. V extremely funny episodes. Deals with life in um, a different way of looking at police life. You know, I think more realistic, you know, where some things are funny and they kind of joke their way through it. But if you look at it, yeah, it, it, it's good. Hawaii Five-0, I wasn't a big fan of that, you know. So Starsky and Hutch, eh, some shows, yeah, some shows, no. You know, I wasn't a too big fan. I tried watching them later on in life, and they really didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> Kmart, I miss Kmart, you know, with shopping memories of shopping here. You know, I used to go to, Kmart, to me, was one of the few stores that constantly carried big and tall sizes for men. You know, Walmart does not, you know what I mean? I, I've complained about that all the time. I don't know why Walmart is not carrying a big and tall section. You know, there's so many big men, and there's no clothes to buy there. Very rare they have something, but Kmart did. I, a long time ago, worked at their uh, bulk warehouse sales, sort of like uh, uh, Sam's. Theirs was called Pace, you know, and but they all went out of business way before the Kmart. You know, there was a lot of that. There was the big store wars back then. You know, but I miss Kmart. I think they had better sales and deals than Walmart. Um, like I said, their clothing. And then they started carrying Tom McCann shoes, which I really liked. I was buying all my shoes from the, Walmart, the, the Kmart because they carried Tom McCann and the shoes are better, better quality. And now you can't get none of that, you know. So especially here I'm at Middle Tennessee, you can't get none of that. Uh, I don't like the shoes at Walmart. They're nasty, you know. Um, they fall apart after a couple of months, you know. And unless you go to one of the bigger shoe stores and pay a lot more for shoes, you know, this is what you get, you know. Uh, I go to Academy now and I'll buy sneakers or something, but, you know, you can't really find good stuff. And you got to go to, like, uh, the farming stores to find good steel toe shoes. You can't find them at Walmart or nothing, you know. Or Academy carries a couple. But steel toe shoes, you got to go to to the farm stores with them, you know. Connect Four, I like this game. I like this game for years and years. You know, I'm I'm pretty good at it. I like playing it. It's very strategic. Um, it it it's a lot of fun. You know, I've played it all different ways. Where we did the four, we did fives. You had to make rows. You know, we made up rules and. You know, it, it's a great game. You know, I had a little travel version I used to carry around with me to play with people. That and backgammon. Backgammon, I used to play AC Ducey all the time. I was a whiz at that. That game, I I, I ate, drank, sleep, AC Ducey backgammon. I was, I was good at that. I, I should have entered tournaments. I mean, I, I was pretty good. Not tooting my own horn, but I was good. You know, I don't play it much now. I got no one to play with. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't like backgammon anymore. But um, I, I think that's fun. Even this game, Connect Four, that used to be very popular. You know, and, and you can't even find kids that want to play with you. Now, this is I like because this is like outdoor cooking. You know what I mean? And it's not an easy thing. You know, it, it well, it's, it's easy and hard at the same time. There's a lot to, to keep track of, to watch. It's easy to burn food. It's easy to undercook food. So, I mean, you really got to be paying attention when you're cooking outside like this. This is real rustic cooking. I've done a little bit of it, uh, you know, and it's, it, it's, it's a little tricky. I mean, you don't want to be mingling with uh, your guests too much while you're doing this type of cooking. Because, like I said, if you're making biscuits or something, you could burn your pies, undercook your pies, burn your bread, overcook beans where it's so thick, you know what I mean? So, I mean, you, you just got to watch, you know what I mean? It's something you got to keep aware 
of, your coals are burning down, you're making fresh coals. So if you do this, and I, I recommend everybody to try it every once in a while, but pay attention to it. If you want to mingle with your guests, don't, because you really won't have time to mingle with them. It's too much to watch, and especially if you want to make good food, you know what I mean, um, and then doing it right, you know. So take your time, try it, you know, and don't burn down nothing. <laughs> this I thought was really cute. You know, the little rabbit going and making, getting his uh, carrot and some sort of lettuce and broccoli. You know, I thought that was like really, really funny. Like he's walking through the supermarket and got his little stuff. <laughs> you know, I just thought that was cute. Now, here's a tool, everybody, and I'll stress this not enough. Everybody should have a Leatherman. Or something like a Leatherman. I used to carry mine all the time. My pouch broke on it and I've been meaning to get it fixed. But it's a great thing to have around your house or leave in your vehicle. You'll have tools when you need them. You can help out other people. I mean, it's you'll always be ready for anything. You'll have a knife, scissors. You have, you know, you'll have maybe a little saw with it. You always have a little pair of needle nose pliers. So I recommend everybody, and I mean everybody, get a pair of, get a Leatherman. You don't got to get an expensive pair unless you want to, but get some sort of Leatherman. Keep it with you. And I used to carry mine on my hip all the time. And believe it or not, uh, people would ask me, you know, you know, come up and tell me, say, hey, can you help me with your Leatherman or something? You know, I need a tool for this. And I would help them out. You know what I mean? Because you'd be surprised. There's always something you could do. Always something to help someone. And even I would be somewhere, someone would be doing something and say, hang on, wait, I got pliers with me. And I would help them out. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you want to be nice out there and do something with the public and all, get a Leatherman. Carry it with you. Leave it in your car. Leave it in your house. You know, and if guys, it comes with a pouch, put it on your belt or clip it to your belt loops or your waistband. And it's good to good to have and use. I just gotta get a sip of water. I'm getting a little a little thirsty. I can't believe we're like 45 minutes in already. That's great. You know, I'll do a few more. You know, I hope everybody's enjoying this. I'm trying. I can't see the comments. So next week, I think I'm gonna do this a little different so I can see stuff. I can't see your comments. You know, what I mean, uh, but I think if anybody was contacting me, Gail would have. You know. Told me something you know, about it or something. Okay. Now um, I'm at uh, oh self-employment. You know it's great that be self-employed. It says you can sleep with your boss's wife. You know your or your husband. You know he'll never know. So yeah, you know you're always up on the office gossip. You know and then you, and someone said I hear the company's going broke. You know then a uh, smaller company picnics. It's only him. You know. Uh, you performance evaluations, you know, I rule. So there's nothing ever wrong when you're doing it yourself. There's nothing ever wrong, you know. But working for yourself is discipline, you know. The discipline is get out there every day, you know, work your stuff, do it. You know, even if you're over here, you know, live streaming, you got to get up, you got to do it. It's the discipline, you know what I mean? So if you're doing that, you're going to be successful. Make sure you have all your tax papers that you need, all your permits that you need, all the city licenses and state and, and all that you need. Make sure you have your stuff. You know what I mean? Learn about the stuff you need. I used to do food. You'll be surprised how many people don't know the food regulations and all. Take time to learn. Ask the city people, especially if you're dealing with food, like the Board of Health people, they want to tell you. They will tell you. You know, they'll tell you what to look up. Because the more prepared you are, it's easier for everybody. See how much it is for you. You don't look at it as a burden. It's stuff you need to know. Like, when we were doing food, you'd be surprised when you met other vendors that didn't know the rules and you correct them. Say, well, no, look, man, you got to do it this way. You got to do it that way. Or don't do this. You know, and then when Board of Health did come around to inspect, this would be out like at events. They appreciated that because people did stuff right. Some listened, some didn't give a damn. And then what happened? They got fined. They had to fix stuff. And it's better to know than not know. Even when I saw 
produce, I knew what to sell and how to sell it. You know, these things are important. Some things are sold by the pound. Some are sold by the each. Some you could sell as a group. Some things you can't do none of that with, only by the pound. So you got to know what you're dealing with. You know, just don't do stuff willy-nilly. Learn a little bit. Ask, you know. Always ask. And if someone's not willing to tell you, then be be questionable what these people are doing or how they're running their thing. Because they should be able to either guide you to the right answer or tell you the answer. You know, if they're not willing to do either one of them, don't get involved with the event or, or anything. Because, or unless you really know your stuff, you know, because stuff can come down and it's going to cost you. You know, so be careful. You know, stay alert. You know, whoops. Oh, this I find really funny. Uh, you know, this is Charleston Heston in the movie Soylent Green when he's fine after he finds out that um, people are made from so Soylent Green is people, the, cl the classic line. But if you ever worked on a factory with conveyor belts and all, this is what I think about all the time when I see this. I said, any minute Charleston Heston's going to come screaming down the conveyor belt screaming, the parts are people, you know. <laughs> So, this is classic if you work at any factory thing, especially with conveyor belts. You know, this is, this, this is what I this is what I see happen one day. Charleston Heston coming down. These part of people, you know, would say, Bobby, the who the hell knows? You know? Then there's a classic book, DVD, Alone in the Wilderness. Uh, a lot of times it's shown on PBS during their fun drives. You know, uh, if you've never seen and you want to do outdoor stuff, you know, or planning to, or just like it, and you never seen it. I recommend you looking it up and watching it. It's it's informative. It's fun. Uh, this man spent years in the wilderness, basically by and how he did it all. Uh, you know, it's not being in any way, shape, or form. You will get hooked on watching it. You know, oh, they go to motorcycle riders. They're probably going out to the lakes. I wonder if you guys can hear them. No. Jake. Can you hear him? My dog gets a kick out of when he hears the motorcycle on by. But this is a great movie. Uh, it'll show you how people do stuff and all. Like when he bought his tools, he didn't bring the handles with him. He just bought the metal parts and made the handles where he was at and they say like when people the Indians and when people would travel around the land that's how they did it also so it's real it's really good if you ever wanted to learn anything about being out in the wilderness this is it's, it's a true story it's 100% factual what this guy did it's documented and I think the house he built in all in those woods is still there it's, it's part of the preserve you know what I mean? So it was all saved and, and, and all of that. This I found really funny. The little bird goes, all right, hand it over. I'll, I'll get my big buddy uh, after you. And, and, and the squirrel looks out and goes, buzz off. Then the big buddy, this big bald eagle, he says, hi, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I cannot do enough of yours to, to suit, you know, you know sh shame your... Shame your clothes, you know, something like that. You know, oh, shine, oh, shine your claws. Sorry, I misread it. You know, shine your claws. You know, so that's like kind of funny. You know? <laughs> like the, his big buddy was the bald eagle. He was going to eat the squirrel. You know, so you never know who someone who might know. You know, <laughs> that's a lesson from that. Then this is one of my favorite memes. You know, it says half my problems are caused by my tone of my voice and sarcasm. Everybody thinks I'm either Bad, arguing, or just an asshole while actually I'm just talking. This Boy, I go through this every day. Every day, every day. The, the breeze is blowing my stuff around. You know, people think saying stuff and it's all the wrong way because it's the way you know, talk. You know, I talk loud. I talk forceful. You know, and I'm not afraid to say what's on my mind. You know, so... Uh, I just, this is a classic meme of me, you know, I mean, I should just put my name over that, and I, you know, put it on a shirt, maybe just change Kirk, uh, Kurt Russell's face to my face in it, and 
There you go. Maybe I might do that. <laughs> you know, and this is classic. This is there. Right back there is where I lost my damn mind. That's the word mind there. You know, I think that's really funny. You know, I mean, I, you know, because like, I, I wonder about it at these times. It's like, yes, it's over there. Especially when I got mad. It's like, that's where I lost my damn mind. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. You know, that's really good. Oh. Big on me. Then that's Brutus the Barber Beefcake from the wrestling fame. Uh, I believe he was Hulk Hogan's brother. You know, um, he died not too long ago. He was in a bad auto, uh, I think it was a motorcycle accident years ago after this picture and his face got messed up where they had to put screws in it and all. He came back to wrestle for a short time and he would only wrestle certain people so they didn't hit him in the face wrong. So, but he was a good wrestler, you know, fun to watch in the ring, ran around with those big shears because he was um, Brutus the Barber. He cut your hair and all that stuff. Then this is classic, you know, where if you, well, back in my generation, you had these cassette tapes, you know, and they would come on unwound and you would stick a pencil in them and the pencil grabbed the gears and you just wound them up. So that was like doing surgery on them and they would get stuck and all that. They would work a long time, even though they would get messed up. You might get a little blip in your, in your stuff, but they still worked. And I like Skidoo stuff and this, I, I tried to figure out one day when I got distracted and I stopped. But it's a math kastu, skadoodoo, whatever, I can never say that damn word right. But it seemed interesting to do. One day I got to really sit and do it, and I know I can do it. You know, but I like to do the skadoos, uh, the regular ones I get. I, I do a lot of them at times when I get bored. Oh, there was a big butterfly that just flew past me out there. And then you got this little fat chubby squirrel going, happiness is licking the spoon. That's everybody. You know, even when I make food, you know, I'll get a plastic spoon out and, and dip it in, eat it, and lick it and throw it away. Never put the spoon back in your food, people. You taste it with a plastic spoon or a different spoon and then throw it in the sink or throw it away. Don't stick it back in the damn pot or nothing. That's gross. It's sick. It's stupid. You know, I won't eat it if I see people do that shit, you know. But the little fat chubby squirrel here is funny as hell with it. This is e Eli Musk, you know, they're, they're making fun of him. He says, flying high on WWE's ends is test track footage that Eli Musk is building a high-speed zip line system to connect Houston, Dallas, and Austin. You know, he, he's kind of funny for a billionaire, you know, um... I don't know. He, he's, I think he's a decent man, but he's a little nutty. You know, if anybody knows him and they're watching this, tell him to contact me. You know, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of funny. You know, I, I, you know, I, you know, I like to meet him face to face. You know, I think he's a decent guy, but you know, he's funny about stuff. You know, and I, I think you can have a lot of laughs. I think he's a down to earth type of guy. I don't think he's too snobbish. You know, but good luck to him with. Twitter and all that stuff, you know, then we got this, welcome to the first annual meeting of the condescending club, the first rule of the condescending club is kind of complex, we don't, I don't think you'll understand even if I explain it to you, that's condescending, <laughs> so it's kind of funny, you know, to be condescending, you know, you know, and say we're not going to be, but then being being it to someone, that's funny. I like things that play on words and all that, so it gets kind of humorous. Yeah. This is uh, Chester from Gunsmoke, you know. He says, well, I'm so hungry, my stomach is growing teeth. You know, he always came up with these weird little uh, sayings and all that stuff, and they, they were funny. And he was a good actor. He went on to be McLeod in the in the 70s detective movies, you know. He rode a horse to New York and all this stuff. Well, it's about an hour we've been doing this. Let me just hit this thing. Yeah, I'm going to go off of that. Okay. 
um, back. You know, oh, someone said, You know, I seen that too in the thing, but I didn't. I didn't know what actor that is. You know, I don't think he ever made it. <laughs> but I had a great time with that. Like I said, I try to share some laughs, some knowledge, some stuff. So it's a little bit of fun. You know, what I mean, well, I'm gonna work on some other ones. I might even do some live ones. You know, like that that are uh, short clips. You know, I'm gonna work on doing them. So, it, that should be a lot of fun, too. I want to let people know, before I do go off, that the Bandana J Show stickers are in, you know? So, these will be on sale in the lobby, you know? <laughs> so, I think everybody will like that. You know, I'll be posting these online in a few days to sell, so and I'll have the link. And then, the people who know Gail, while Olive Gail, her new stickers are out, you know? you know, of her ministries, you know, so these will also be on sale soon too, you know, I think she might even have a prize contest coming up or something like that she's been talking about, so keep a lookout for that, um, it was great, it was fun, you know, like I said, I might try to change things up so I could see the comments a little bit better next, you know, but Gail was helping me some of that, you know, and I was, that's why you see me looking down and up, you know, but it was a lot of fun. You know, we like doing these. You know, we're going to be doing a lot more, changing stuff around, making stuff better. You know, if anybody's watching the football games today, get out and enjoy them. You know, watch them, cheer for your team, cheer for the other teams to beat your team like I do. <laughs> yeah. I like watching teams beat other teams. You know, I was so happy the Giants beat Tennessee. You know, I, I'm an old, uh, old Giants and Jets fan. You know, I follow several teams, really, Jets, Giants, uh, Dallas, the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and the Jaguars, you know, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. I used to follow uh, uh, Tennessee Titans, but I don't know, they get on my nerves. But they're doing better, so I might go back cheering them. I'm, I'm not sure yet. You know what I mean? Because uh, when they, a few years ago, they were just like, oh, you know. But anyway. I'm glad everybody had fun. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Have a great week. I probably won't be on till Thursday, I think, when I'll be doing a walk again through Cookville. And then next week, there's a couple other events we're going to go through. So uh, that'd be a lot of fun. And then I'll be back again here on Sunday. You know, so stay tuned. Watch everything. And we'll see you then. Let me just fix this one thing here. Okay, you know, God bless you. Be careful.